Jurgen Klopp has announced that he will leave at the end of the season, bringing an end to an era at Liverpool. And after he leaves, some star players may follow him. So in Football Manager, I have sold club captain Virgil van Dijk and star player Mo Salah to begin a new era at the club. Hey, how's it going and welcome to the Liverpool Rebuild. Jurgen Klopp has left the club and also club captain Virgil van Dijk and key player Mo Salah have also left the club as well. Of course, this may not happen in real life at the end of the season when Klopp does leave, that Van Dijk and Salah will leave. But for the sake of this rebuild, I thought about making it a bit more interesting. I thought setting the club captain and the key player is uh, going to make it a little bit more tricky here with Liverpool. So both players, Van Dijk and Salah, have both gone to the Saudi Arabian League. I feel like, I feel like that's the most likely destination for those two once they uh, do leave Liverpool. Van Dijk has gone to Al Nasser for £80 million and Mo Salah has gone to Al Hilal for £120 million. So it's obviously going to be extremely difficult, virtually impossible to replace both these players. Uh, of course, looking more towards the future, uh, one of those players I do replace them with might be as good as either of those two players in the future, but Straight off, I think it's virtually impossible, really. Arguably, Mo Salah is the best right winger in the world now. And uh, Virgil van Dijk is uh, one of the best centre-backs in the world, if not the best as well. So, can't really replace those two. Van Dijk has gone to Al Nasser, 31 years of age now. That's turned 32. And looking at him, he's just absolutely unbelievable, wasn't he? A complete defender, absolutely brilliant. And, of course, Mo Salah as well. He's also 31 years of age as well. And of course, he is absolutely insane as well. So to replace those two is going to be extremely difficult. To replace Jurgen Klopp is going to be extremely difficult as well. But I have been given that task. Also, with this rebuild, if you watched any of my other rebuilds, you'll know how it goes. Uh, I am the manager, but I'm taking more of a director of football uh, style role here with Liverpool. I will select the tactics, though. That is the only thing I will do on that side of the game. I'll go on holiday for the seasons. I'll select use current match tactics. And in terms of the day-to-day -day running of the club, that will fall to the assistant manager. In terms of picking the team for each game, what subs to bring on, stuff like that. But transfers and the tactics, I will be in control of that. So talking about tactics, this is the tactic I'm setting up with here at the start with Liverpool. Uh, if you watch any of my other rebuilds, it's pretty much the same as my other team's tactics. I don't really uh, venture too far away from the tactic I like. I do uh, I do fiddle about though with the uh, the player roles in uh, each of the tactic I do select. So the goalkeeper position, first of all, I don't think that's a, a problem area of the team. That's arguably the best position of the team now, to be honest. Alisson is a sweeper keeper on support. Um, absolutely brilliant. Arguably the best goalkeeper in the world, so that is fine. Right back, I've gone with Trent Alexander-Arnold and as an inverted wing back on attack. Uh, obviously, the way he normally plays in real life and uh, he's a great passer of the ball, of course. 18 passing. Not the best physically, so I feel like he can do the best of his work through the middle of the pitch effectively as an inverted wing back. Got Andy Robertson as a wing back on support left back. So again, the full backs looking great. Can't complain of that at all. The defense though, obviously about Van Dijk, it's a gaping hole in the defense. We've got Canate and Matip. Uh, Canate is a very good center back, 24 years of age. So hopefully he might get a little bit better than this. He's not quite as good as, uh, as passing out from the back as Van Dijk is. And of course he's not as good as Van Dijk, but as an, uh, as an actual central defender, he's Pretty good, six foot four, great heading, great jumping reach, great strength as well. He's quick as well, so he's definitely a good centre back, that is for sure. The other side, though, I feel like we're a little bit weak with Joel Matip there. He's definitely a good centre half, but he's 31, about to turn 32, and physically he is not the best. So I do need to go out and sign a centre back, but as I said, to replace Van Dyke, it's going to be extremely difficult. Also, the two centre backs as ball playing defenders, of course. In the midfield, we've got two DMs. We've got uh, Endo as a ball midfielder on defend. Um, I feel like that's definitely a position we're lacking in as a defensive midfielder, to be honest. Endo is a decent player. He'd be a decent backup DM option, but as your number one DM, I don't think he's good enough, to be honest with you. And I've also got Alexis McAllister in there as a Segundo Volante on attack. So more of an attacking-minded uh, DM. Uh, McAllister, very good player, but physically, not very good at all, to be honest. We've also got Soboschlei there as attack midfielder on support. So the midfielder's looking quite good. Uh, need a new DM though, I'd say. That is for sure. Uh, on the right wing, got Diogo Jota there instead of Mo Salah. Jota is clearly a good player, but nowhere near close to being Mo Salah level. Him as an inverted winger on attack. Got Luis Diaz in his inside forward on attack. And Darwin Nunez in advanced forward as well. Uh, in terms of the mentality, got positive mentality. And in possession, we've got shorter passing. Play out of defence, higher tempo. Roll it out, high press, trigger press much more often as well. So 
The team was looking quite good, I'd say, but obviously we're missing two of the best players in the league, two of the top five best players in the league, you'd say. So that is obviously a big, big problem. Uh, need to somehow sign a centre-back, I'd say. Uh, probably looking more towards a DM than a right winger as well at the moment, to be honest. Got some other players who can play there, such as Gakpo. Got Harvey Elliott as well. Gravenberg's attacking midfielder as well. So the attacking side of things is not looking too bad. And as I said, to sign a player as good as Mo Salah is virtually impossible. But DM and a centre-back, I feel like we definitely need one of those two, play two positions. So even though I sold those two players for a combined £200 million, pounds, only got £57 million pounds in the transfer budget and only 844 k under the wage budget. But that should be enough to bring in one, maybe two players. So I'll bring you back for the end of the transfer window. Let's see what players I've signed in Season 1. So in terms of the transfers, lots of players left us out on loan. Uh, most notably players like Ben Doak. He's on loan to Norwich for the season in the championship. So uh, hopefully good for his development there. Also Bobby Clark is on loan to Shrewsbury. And uh, just three players left us, uh, or two players, sorry, left us permanently after Mo Salah and Van Dijk. That is uh, two young players, one gone to Sunderland, one gone to Leeds. And also Jarrell Quonsa. He's on loan to Mines for the season as well. Um, He's a decent player. He's shown a great uh, potential in real life. And as a complete ball playing defender, he looks very, very good. He's also massive as well, being six foot six, um, 15 composure, very, very nice. But he still needs to develop a little bit, being 20 years of age. Hopefully, he can develop very nicely at Mines in the Bundesliga this season. So, to the players I have signed. I've actually agreed to sign three players, but one of them will only join us at the end of the season. So, the two players that have joined us, well, the first one is a new centre back. Antonio Silva, one of the most highly regarded centre-backs in the game. He has joined us from Benfica for £52 million. So yeah, definitely very expensive for Silva. I don't think he's worth £52 million now, being only 19 years of age. But in the future, hopefully, with the right development, he'll be one of the best centre-backs in the game. And could be as good as Van Dijk uh, in the future, we shall see. Obviously, right now, he is not as good as Van Dijk. If we look at the comparison here with the two players, Van Dijk is... a uh, yeah, the stand-up centre-back over Antonio Silva has to be said, but Silva's only 19 years of age. He is still going to develop. It was always going to be very hard to replace Antonio, uh, to replace Van Dijk, sorry, but Antonio Silva, he's got all the attributes here to be world-class in the future. He's a very complete ball-playing defender. A lot of 14s, 15s going on here. He's also a model citizen as well, so very happy with the signing of Silva, but he is not at Van Dijk's level yet, unfortunately. The next player to join us is a new DM. That is Andre. He joins us from Fluminense for just £14.5 million. He's 22 years of age. Hasn't got quite the ceiling of Antonio Silva, but also only costs £14.5 million. Only comes in as a squad option. I was struggling to find a great DM uh, to replace Endo. So, um, yeah, very, very difficult for the money I had. Andre, though, for how cheap he is, 22 years of age. Hopefully, he's going to improve. Um, he looks like a good squad player to up, uh, option to have. And he's also can play in numerous roles as well in the DM. He can play as that ball midfielder. He can also play as a Segundo Volante as well. So very happy with the signing of Andre as well. But also, I have agreed to sign a player, a player to replace Mo Salah. That is Savio. He currently plays for Troy in the French League Earn, but he's on loan at Corona for the season. I have agreed to sign him for £13.5 million. But seeing he's on loan to Corona for the season, he can't join us till the end of the season. I'm very excited to sign him, though. Again, he's not uh, nowhere near on the same level as Mo Salah, but he's 19 years of age, very versatile as well. And he's already got some very good attributes here. He's very quick, 16 acceleration, 16 pace. He's also got 16 technique, 17 dribbling, and 17 flair as well. He's also left-footed, similar to Mo Salah, coming off the right-hand side there. So I have replaced um, Van Dijk and Salah to an extent, but... We're not going to see the best of that until what, maybe three or four years down in the future. That was always going to be the problem here with Liverpool, with the lack of money and uh, selling such two key players. But I have signed players for the future, so I'm very happy with that. And of course, as I said, the assistant will be in charge of the team on a day-to-day -day running basis. And this is the opinion of the uh, the best 11 for the start of the season. Um, Joe Gomez is apparently our second best centre-back along with Canate. But of course, we've got Matty and we've got Antonio Silva now as well. In the midfield, the same Thiago as a Segundo Volante on attack. Don't really suit his game, to be honest. He's also out injured for six to seven months with a hip injury, so not going to use him much, I should imagine. And McAllister is attacking midfield on support. It's his best position, apparently. Probably agree with that. And the front three hasn't changed. So in terms of the season preview as well, we are predicted to finish second in the league, just behind Man City. But we haven't got a single player in the media Dream 11, which is a little bit worrying, but I'm not expecting us to win the league in the first season. But can we win some sort of competition in the first season? Well, let's find out. Unfortunately, we couldn't win a competition in our first season. We came third in the league with 88 points, which is very high points tally for a third place team, it has to be said. 
just one point behind Man City and 10 points behind Tottenham who won the league title with 98 points. How ridiculous is that? That would never happen in a million years, would it? Anyway, Tottenham have won the league with 98 points, 10 points clear of us, but has to be said, it's quite a decent points tally for the first season without Salah and Van Dijk. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. A plus 64 goal difference as well is very nice, but ultimately we fell short from Tottenham and Man City in the end. In the Europa League, that is very disappointing. I was hoping we could win that competition. We should be winning that competition, really. We got knocked down in the semi-final by Roma, which is, yeah, very, very disappointing. Also, the FA Cup. We lost the final of the FA Cup as well. We'll see who we lost to in a second. That's very disappointing. And the Carabao Cup, we got knocked down in the fourth round by Norwich. So, the league, not too bad, has to be said. Third in the league, 88 points. Without Salah and Van Dijk is quite acceptable, really. But the Europa League, knocked down the semi-final by Roma. And losing the FA Cup final as well, very disappointing. We actually lost at home to Roma 2-1 in the first leg, which did cost us, which is very annoying. Especially us being one up in the third minute. You'd expect to beat Roma quite comfortably at home, to be honest. And also, the FA Cup was disastrous. With the FA Cup final against Nottingham Forest, we're 2-0 up and we lose 3-2. So, yeah, we, we really should be talking about a double at the end of the first season here. The Europa League, got to be getting through to the, uh, the final of that, playing Roma in the semi-final. And the FA Cup to be 2-0 up against a team like Nottingham Forest to not go on to win the uh, the cup is very, very disappointing. So, taking, it, taking that into regard, the season has been quite disappointing, really. Went far in three competitions, but to fall at the final hurdle is, uh, yeah, really disappointing to teams such as Roma and Nottingham Forest. In terms of the squad, well, best player of the season actually goes to Alexis McAllister with 23 goals and 10 assists for him and a 7.35 average rating. So, he had a great first season for us. Also, Jota with 14 goals and 17 assists. Darwin Nunez was the top goal scorer, 26 goals and 7 assists as well. Trent got 17 assists for the season. In terms of new signings, Andre started 46 games in the season. He got 8 goals and 6 assists, so he did really well. And also, Antonio Silva, he started 45 games in total. He got 6 goals and 3 assists with a 7.07 .07 average rating. So, the two new signings did quite well, has to be said. Uh, but the standout player of the season was McAllister. But unfortunately, the talk of season one is uh, two bottle jobs in the Europa League and the FA Cup. We should be talking about at least one trophy here in the first season, and possibly even two. Instead, we're talking about none. What can we do in season two, though? Can we win a competition in season two? Well, let's find out. At the start of season two here, and only one first team player has left the club permanently, and that is Thiago. He has gone to Al Ali for £18.25 million. I did sign him on for a new contract for another year, uh, risk losing him on a free transfer, uh, but I did decide at the start of the season that he's not really good enough for us, and I sold him to Al Ali for £18.25 million. Of course, he's a brilliant footballer, brilliant technical, uh, technically gifted footballer, but for the way we're playing, physically, he's not good enough, 33 years of age now, so I felt it was right to cash in on him as well. So he's gone to Al Ali. Uh, other than that, no first team player has left us. Set Vandenberg, has gone to Dortmund for £14.75 million. Uh, Billy Camitio has gone to Elch for 275 k And Josh Davidson has gone to Southampton on a free transfer as well. Lots of loans to talk about as well. Lots of players going out on loan, such as Calvin Ramsey, Bicicic, Quantz has gone on loan to Stuttgart for this season as well. Also, Ben Doak has gone on loan to West Brom as well. So, some high potential players in the under-21s are getting some uh, valuable game time this season as well. In terms of players to join us, well, three new signings to talk of, plus Savio, that makes it four. Uh, not very big signings apart from the first one. The first one is a very big signing, and that is Victor Osimhen. I've signed a new striker. Darwin Nunez is pretty good, but I don't think he's outstanding. We have to have another option up there up front, and uh, Victor Osimhen is the, the likely candidate, being that he's got £103 million minimum fee release clause. So he has joined us from Napoli, which I'm very excited about. Uh, he's great in uh, some very... Um, He's got some great attributes to talk of, such as his finishing, 18 finishing, 18 heading, and also 19 pace and 19 off the ball as well. So he's very good in certain areas of his game. He's not so good technically or with uh, his vision side of the game, but he's very quick. He's brilliant in the air, and he's also going to put the ball in the back of the net. So very excited to have Osterman at the club. Not very versatile, but hopefully he will bang the goals in for us. The other three signings to talk about are three young players. Uh, Savio, of course, has joined the club now, £13.5 million. Pounds. Yeah, very excited about having, having him here at the club. He might not get um, regular game time this season, but I'm hoping he's going to get plenty of game time off the bench. Very versatile, so he should do. 20 years of age now, hasn't got a cap for Brazil yet, but I'm sure that will come. He had a good season last season with Corona. He got seven goals and four assists in the, uh, the La Liga, so hopefully... 
he's ready for that step up here with Liverpool. The other two players I've signed is uh, one of them is a regen already. That is Chancel Matondo. I signed him from Man City for £1 million. Hopefully, he could be useful in the future. We shall see. Of course, right now, he's not looking so good. Only 16 years of age, though. He is in the under-18 squad. And the next one to join us is a very highly rated wonder kid. That is Kanazun. I signed him from Nuremberg for £8.75 million. I actually tried to sign him last season, but unfortunately, I ran out of money. Uh, I signed him this season, though. He's gone back on loan to Nuremberg for the season. A player has got a very, very high ceiling, it has to be said. Technically, a very gifted player. But I think it's clear that he still needs one or two seasons out on loan to get him the right development but the big signing to talk of is of course Victor Osterden for £103 million the other three are young players but Savio he's in the first team as well um, Tondo's in the under 18s and Azun has gone back on loan to Nuremberg for the season so in terms of the assistants best pick for the 11 for the season uh one change well Antonio Silva has been promoted to our best centre back arguably in the club now he's Developed really nicely last season. As you can see there, he got a few green ratings going on now. 16 anticipation, 16 stamina, 16 natural fitness as well. And he keeps developing, so he's a very exciting signing to talk. Of course, still not a Van Dyke's level, but he's slowly creeping up there, which is very nice. Also, Andre uh, is apparently our, our best secondo volante at the club. You may have noticed as well, I've changed it from attack to support as well for this season. And um, McAllister is tagged field and support. And of course, the most notable one is Victor Osman leading the line for us. That means Darwin Nunez is apparently preferred option to Luis Diaz as an inside forward and attack. So even though I signed Osman to replace Nunez, it seems like Nunez will be replacing Diaz in the team. But I'm sure Diaz will get plenty of game time as well. So last season was a little bit underwhelming, has to be said. We should have won at least one competition, arguably two as well. The league was quite decent though, 88 points to a plus 64 goal difference, third in the league. But we did do rather well last season. And in terms of the media, Dream 11, we've got one player in the Dream 11 now. And that is Trent as our right back. And also, again, predicted to finish second this season. Can we go one better than the last season, finish second? Or can we go two better and win the league title? Well, unfortunately, we couldn't get anywhere close to winning the league title. It was an absolutely disastrous, absolute disastrous league campaign. We finished down in sixth place. Sixth in the league with just 69 points. It's a whopping 19 points less than last season, which is absolutely terrible. And interestingly enough, we would have got 88 points this season. We would have won the league title by five points. So that is very disappointing. But that is absolutely terrible, that. Absolutely terrible. Sixth in the league with just 69 points. If you're wondering why I haven't been sacked, finishing sixth in the league, well, of course, for the rebuild, since I go on holiday for the seasons, I make myself unsackable to avoid some embarrassment here. And, uh, yeah, trying to rebuild the club, basically. So I would have been sacked on any other occasion. Sixth in the league of Liverpool is clearly nowhere near good enough. Absolutely terrible, in fact. 19 points less than the last season, but also a plus 33 goal difference worse than last season as well. So, yeah, didn't really change much in terms of the tactics. Changed the Segundo Volante from attack to support, but that wouldn't uh, make such a difference to the goal difference. Surely not. And also, I've signed Osman up front, but it hasn't worked this season, unfortunately. Champions League was very disappointing as well. Knocked down the round of 16 by AC Milan. The FA Cup knocked down the quarterfinal by Brighton. We did end the season, though, with a piece of silverware. Our first trophy in the rebuild here. We won the Carabao Cup. Who we, who do we beat in the final of the Carabao Cup? Let's check it out. We beat West Ham in the Carabao Cup final 4-3, which is a bit, bit of an epic. But also, look at this. We were 4-0 up in this game, and they paid us back to 4-3. So, yeah, we pretty much saved our blushes there. But we did win the competition in the end, which is, uh, guess, what, you, uh, what you're meant to do. But to be 4-0 up to only win 4-3 is very, very disappointing. So yeah, terrible league campaign for us. Terrible in the Champions League as well. But at least we end off the season with a piece of silverware. Something we couldn't do last season. So uh, in that regard, it is better. But in terms of the actual performance of the season, a way worse season than season one, it has to be said. Also, one thing I should mention as well. I made a big signing in January. I signed Joao Neves from Benfica for £90 million. Very expensive, but he's also a player has a massive ceiling as well. Another Portuguese player I've signed from Benfica. Of course, they've got an incredible youth system. Neves, though, is a little bit of a head-scratcher, it has to be said. Um, he's a very, very complete midfielder, uh, but he's also his best role is as a ball midfielder, but his actual worst attributes are his defensive attributes. So he's a little bit of a head-scratcher, Neves. Our, um, personally, I'd rather play him as a Segundo Volante, but of course, I don't pick the team. And the assistant prefers him as a ball midfielder. I would still like to sign a great DM player. I don't think Neves is that great DM player. Um, 
but he's definitely better than Endo, but not in his defensive attributes. But mentally, he's outstanding, as you see there. He's also technically very good as well. And he's very good physically, but defensively, not as not that great. It's only 12 marking, only 12 tackling as well. But he's only 20 years of age, so he may improve yet. Hopefully, he does. 90 million pounds is very expensive, but I'm, I'm happy to have him here at the club. Although, I do think we still need to sign a DM who's got better defensive attributes than Neves. In terms of the squad as well, well, best player of the season actually goes to Victor Osimhen. Uh, he did well. He did his job. He got 32 goals in 48 games of the season with only four assists, but not really such a standout player as McAllister last season. He had a big drop-off as well. He only got 13 goals and four assists this season, so way off his season one standard. Maybe that affected us more than we could think, to be honest. McAllister was doing things for us last season. This season, not so much. Jota had another good season. He only started 22 games. Featured in 55, though. He got 16 goals and 15 assists. Also, Soboschlai got 8 goals and 16 assists as well. And Diaz, who's not very happy now, he got 10 goals and 14 assists as well. Savio only started 7 games in the season, but he came off the bench 25 times. He also scored 9 goals and got 2 assists. So, the potential is definitely there for Savio. And new signings, Raul Neves. Only signed in January. He also picked up an injury as well. Only started 11 games but he did get three assists. So we did win a competition in the second season, our first of the rebuild here, the Carabao Cup. But unfortunately, the league and Champions League campaign were absolutely disastrous. And see if we finish sixth in the league, no Champions League football next season. We've got to go back into the Europa League. But also bittersweet about playing in the Europa League is uh, we want to play in the Champions League, of course. Liverpool should be playing in the Champions League. But we could get our second chance of winning the Europa League and winning our second competition of the rebuild. Hopefully we do that in season three. At the start of season three, and only one first team player has left the club again, and that is an aging Joel Matip, who has got Norwich of all clubs. I expect him to go to Saudi Arabia, to be honest, but he feels like he wants to play in England still, and he has gone to Norwich for £2.6 million. He played with Ben Doak again this season. He's gone on loan, the, uh, loan to Norwich for the season as well. But Joel Matip, as you can see by his physical attributes here, he clearly is not good enough anymore. He's still good enough defensively, of course, but physically only 10 acceleration, only 11 strength as well. It is time for him to leave, and he has gone to Norwich for just £2.6 million. Also sold a few youngsters as well. Owen Beck has gone to Southampton for £9.75 million. Cade Gordon has gone to Nottingham Forest for £8 million as well. Also some familiar names got out on loan as well. Uh, Bice's Chich has gone on loan to Udinese for the season. Continue his development. Also Bobby Clark has gone on loan to Reading as well. Kanazun, he's on loan to Leon for the season as well. He was on loan to Nuremberg last season. Yet to see him in the Liverpool shirt, of course, but very high potential. Fabio Carvalho is on loan to Southampton. Uh, James McConnell, another youngster, has gone to uh, West Ham for £10 million. And also some uh, some big players in the first team have gone out on loan as well. Uh, Ryan Gravenberg is on loan to Lille for the season. Connor Bradley is on loan to Wolves for the season as well. And also Harvey Elliott has gone on loan to AC Milan for the season as well. I do always struggle with Harvey Elliott in my rebuilds. I signed him for Newcastle as well, my Newcastle rebuild. But it seems like the assistant always finds it hard to... Uh, to fit him into my tactic, to be honest, because naturally he's a right winger, but I don't think that's his best position, really. It's probably his best position is the attacker and field position, but since he's only competent there, he never really gets used there for some reason, but I really like him. I think he's a really good player. Technically, he's outstanding, really. Mentally, he's outstanding as well. Physically, not the best. Hasn't really got the pace to be a right winger, in my opinion, but yeah, if I was managing the, managing the team on a day-to-day -day basis, there's no way I'd loan him out. But unfortunately, he is not getting the game time at all. He is not very happy. He's still 22 years of age, so hopefully he can develop at a big club like AC Milan. So in terms of the players that have joined us, only one player has joined us for the first team. And I've also signed a player called Esteval from Palmeiras for just 80k. Uh, he hasn't got quite the a great potential. You see there, two and a half star potential ability, but I know he has got quite a big ceiling. Not quite a world-class player ceiling, but for 80k, hopefully we can make some profit on him in the future, or he might be good enough to play for us. So we shall see about him. He's in the under 21s for now. And also I've signed another player and uh, another massive signing has to be signed. Must has to be said, sorry. I have signed Florian Verts from Bayer Leverkusen for 135 million pounds. Very happy to get Fuller Reverts into the club. He's a brilliant player in real life and in FM, of course. Technically, he's absolutely unbelievable. 18 dribbling, 18 first touch, 18 passing, 18 technique, 18 flair, and 18 vision. He likes an 18 attribute Fuller Reverts, it has to be said. An outstanding player, it has to be said. He's also very good physically as well. Got good pace, good stamina as well. He's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant, isn't he? He's also versatile, playing on the left, the right, up front and centre midfield, but I think it's safe to say 
his best position is attack midfield. And now already he's a five-star player for us. So hopefully he will uh, prove his worth and be outstanding for us. Very, very happy to sign of Verts. Uh, you can pair it with Alexis McAllister. He's been very good for us as an attack midfielder. But you can pair it with Florian Verts. It's just no contest, is it really? Florian Verts is just a much better player, especially physically, which uh, McAllister is definitely lacking in. Florian Verts is not amazing physically, but he's a lot better than McAllister. And also he's got 18 vision, 18 technical as well. So very happy to sign him Verts. He's still only 22 years of age, so he might even improve from this point onwards, uh, which is a very, very scary thought. So yeah, hopefully this is the guy that can lead us to a major trophy. So the team is starting to take shape a little bit now, it has to be said. Uh, I've changed Alexander-Arnold from attack to support for this season. Defensively, weren't very good last season at all, really. Uh, but the other four players haven't changed at all. We've got Alisson, Robertson, Canate, and Antonio Silva. In midfield, obviously, we've got Joao Neves now, who's uh, definitely uh, an upgrade on Wataro Endo, that is for sure. But I just wish he was a little bit better defensively, along with Andre there. Florian Verts, well... He could arguably be the best attacking midfielder in the world now in the game. So, very happy to signing of Verts. Apparently, Soboslai is our best right winger at the club now. I tend to disagree with that, but what, what, can I, what do I know? Soboslai on the right wing, uh, Nunez on the left wing, and of course, Victor Osimhen up front. So, with Florian Verts in the middle of the park there, what can you do for us this season in terms of winning a major competition? In terms of the season preview for the third season in a row, we are predicted to finish second in the league. So, yet to be predicted to finish first in the league. But last season was absolutely terrible. Sixth in the league was abysmal. Hopefully, that will be our worst performance in the league in the entire rebuild. If it gets any worse than that, then I need to pack up my job, then I really, let's be honest, absolutely terrible. We've got one player in the Dream 11 as well, and that is Florian Verts. Uh, outstanding player, probably going to rival Odegaard. Uh, De Bruyne are probably falling down a little bit now in the third season as the best attacking midfielder in the Premier League. So season two was absolutely terrible in terms of the league and the Champions League. We did win the Carabao Cup, though. Can we win another competition in Season 3? Well, fortunately, the league campaign was a lot better than last season. We finished fourth in the league, qualifying for next season's Champions League, which is nice. But still, far off the top of the league, which is Tottenham again. They've won their second trophy in three seasons. Far behind Tottenham again, who have won their second trophy in three seasons with 90 points. But we did get 10 points better off the last season, which is definitely an upgrade with 79 points. But still, fourth in the league is... Yeah, underwhelming has to be said. But at least it's a lot better than sixth in the league and we at least qualify for Champions League football for next season as well. Well, we got to the FA Cup final for the second time in three seasons, but unfortunately, we lost the FA Cup final again. The first one we lost to Nottingham Forest being 2-0 up. This time round, we lost to Arsenal 1-0. Uh, I'll take losing to Arsenal in the FA Cup final. I'm not happy with it, obviously, but the first one's really, uh, really annoyed me, it has to be said. But to be the two FA Cup finals already and not win one of them, very, very disappointed with that, has to be said. We actually won the Carabao Cup last season, of course. Our first trophy in the rebuild. It was a pathetic defence from us, it has to be said. We lost in the third round, our first time entering the competition. We lost at home to Tottenham 3-2. Of course, Tottenham are a good team. Very good in this uh, in this uh, virtual universe, has to be said. Two league titles in three seasons. So it was obviously a tricky tie, but home advantage as well. You'd expect us to win that game. Unfortunately, not so good domestically again this season. We did get to the FA Cup final, lost that. We did, however, though, win our second trophy of the rebuild. We won the Europa League final, thankfully. We beat Lazio, Roma's fierce rivals, of course. We hit them 1-0 in the final. Look at that. The winner of the Europa League was Jarrell Quonsa, who scored a goal in the 54th minute to win us that trophy. So, not so good again in terms of the, uh, the league campaign. We just finished sixth last season, fourth this season, but... At least we have won a competition again. We've won the Europa League. And last season, of course, we won the Carabao Cup. So definitely still not our best, it has to be said. But at least we've won two trophies in the last two seasons. What can we do in Season 4? Can we get closer to winning the league title? Well, the last two seasons, although we've won two trophies and won in each of the seasons, it hasn't been anywhere near good enough, has to be said. So in Season 4 here, I had a massive clear out of the club. I've sold players totaling £355 million and I've signed players totaling £330 million. And I've also sold eight first team players. So let's get to the players that left us first of all. The first big player to leave us was Gravenberg. He has gone to Atletico Madrid for £34.5 million. Of course, he's a player who had high promise, high promise early on in his career, but not really good enough for us, I'd say. Uh, he's no more than a fringe player at the club as a DM or as an attack midfielder. So to get £34.5 million to him, very happy with that. Also, Alexis McAllister, who was our best player in Season 1, but he has been falling down the pecking order a little bit since Florian Wurtz has, uh, has joined the club. So he has gone to Inter Milan for £58 million. 
Also, Soberschlei, a little bit surprising because he's been very good for us the last couple of seasons. He got 11 goals and 8 assists last season in the league, so he did really well. But he has joined Bayern Munich uh, for £63 million. Again, he's a good player, very good. But if you're comparing him to the likes of Florian Wirtz, uh, these are the sort of players I'm looking to go for now. And Soberschlei, although he's very good, he's not quite on that standard, I'd say. So I've sold him as well for £63 million. Diogo Jota has gone to Saudi Arabia. He's gone to Al Halal for £30 million. Uh, Fabio Carvalho hasn't featured in the first team. Uh, not really good enough. He has gone to Stuttgart for £14 million. The big problem, though, is I've sold both my left backs. Simicas and Robertson have both left the club. Uh, both were not happy uh, being here at the club. Uh, Simicas not happy with his game time in his last year's contract. And Robertson, he wants to leave the club for bigger money in his last year's contract as well. So I was forced to sell both of them. I was hoping to keep one of them, but unfortunately I had to sell both of them. Simakas has gone to El Itifak for £10.75 million. And Andy Robertson has gone to Al Nasser for £28.5 million. Robertson is still a very good left back, but he's 32 years of age now. So the decline is going to start happening this season, I shall imagine. But I'd like to have kept him for a season or two more. But unfortunately, he wants to leave. He wants that big money. He's now earning 900k a week at Al Nasser. Also, Calvin Ram, he's gone to Norwich for £8 million as well. Endo has left the club. He's on a Sevilla for £5.75 million. Uh, Cody Gakpo, been trying to sell him, but unfortunately no one wants to make a bid. He's on a load to Inter Milan for the season. Uh, Tyler Morton, a homegrown lad, has gone to RB Leipzig for £10 million. And two more massive players have left the club as well. Luis Diaz has gone to Al Itihad for £64 million. He isn't really happy with his game time. He's fallen down the pecking order behind Darwin Nunez. Still a very good player, very very good to technically, of course. 29 years of age as well. Got a couple of seasons left in him at, at least, but he's not happy with the uh, assistant, with his game time, of course. I can't control these things, seeing as I'm not uh, in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the club. Last season, he only started five games in the league, eight in total, so of course he's unhappy. At least we got £64 million for him. And Alisson, the club legend, has left the club as well. He has gone to Al Ali for £24 million. 33 years of age. He has started to decline now. So, um, yeah, he's still arguably one of the best goalkeepers in the world. So, what am I thinking selling him? Well, the reason I sold Alisson was Diogo Costa has come up for £33.5 million from Porto. That is his minimum fee release clause. And I feel like that is the best option I have to replace Alisson. Because if we didn't sign Costa this season... He would have gone to another club and he would have been unavailable for the rest of the rebuild probably. So I made the decision to try and sell Allison and bring in Costa to replace him. Although Costa is not quite as good as Allison, I'd say. It is very, very close. And of course, Costa is uh, seven years younger. So definitely planning for the future here and selling Allison because Allison could be our number one for another two seasons at least. But Diogo Costa, as I said, he will not be available after this point for such cheap money so i decided to sweep in for him and thankfully i got him to replace allison and he's already a four and a half star goalkeeper for us so not that bad to sign in to replace allison the next player i signed is manuel akanji he has joined us from man city for 27 million pounds um not the greatest the greatest defender on the game has to be said um but the thing i like about akanji is he's very versatile can play center back of course but he can also play left back and right back. Only sign up as a squad player and uh, relatively cheap, it has to be said. The next four players that join us, though, are four relatively young players and four players who are very expensive as well. Simone Perfundi has joined us from Udinese for £63 million. One of the top wonder kids on the game. Absolutely unbelievable. And he could be, he could be the, uh, the long-term replacement for Mo Salah. Of course, I've signed Savio, who's another right winger, but in my opinion, Perfundi's ceiling is even higher than Savio's, which is, uh, yeah, Something very nice has to be... Look at him already. Look at him already. He's absolutely unbelievable. Only 20 years of age, 13 caps and 7 goals for Italy already. But look at him technically. Look at him mentally as well. 20 vision for Pavundi is very, very nice. Physically, he's very good as well. Um, his best position is attack midfield, but that is Florian Wurtz's position. And uh, although Pavundi is outstanding, not quite as good as uh, Wurtz as attack midfielder. But as a right winger... I feel like that's the position he could play in, for sure. Very, very good. Very outstanding player. The fact that we've got Profundi and Savio at the club now. Very, very exciting times. Also, I've signed Lukba from RB Leipzig for £89 million. Very expensive to sign uh, Lukba, but he's another centre-back who's got a very, very high ceiling. But I think I'll be playing him, or the system we'll be playing him, mainly as a left-back this season. Because I sold Robertson and Simakas to attacking left-backs. I couldn't really sign an attacking left-back to replace them, so 
I've gone for a different style this season. I've signed, well, a Kanji and Luke, but not natural left backs, but they can play that as inverted fullbacks. And that is what I'm going with this season. And hopefully that'll be Luke's position. A very, very good player. Very good uh, ball playing defender. 17 composure, 16 positioning. He's very quick as well. So very happy with the signing of him. I've also signed a player from Saudi Arabia. Usually goes the other way around. I signed Matteo Prati from Al Shabab for £68 million. Pounds. He's one of the players who haven't got ridiculously high wages where you can't afford him. He's only 22 years of age. He is a new DM option to, to have at the club. Uh, very complete player, which I like. Uh, obviously not a world-class player, but he's only 22 years of age, so hopefully he'll get better. Uh, got 16 passing, 17 vision as well. Physically, he's quite good. Mentally, he's very good as well. So, yeah, very happy to signing of him. Quite expensive, though, £68 million, pounds, but hopefully he'll be worth it. And the final signing I've made is another player from Benfica. He's not Portuguese, though. He is Norwegian, and that is Andreas Schelderup. He has joined us from £49 million. Pounds. Uh, very good player. Not so good mentally, I'd say. Uh, physically, not the best either. But technically, he's very, very gifted. Still young as well, 22 years of age. So hopefully, he can still improve. And um, yeah, very versatile as well. Play on the left and up front and attack midfield. So sold some big names this season. But I've replaced most of them with uh, younger players who hopefully will be turned to be as good as them, if not better in the future. You know, players like Pafunde, Lukba uh, and Diogo Costa unbelievable players in their own right already and they're still on the young side so it's been a massive clear out this season but i feel like it's uh, gone quite well although i am kind of missing a left back so this is the assistant's opinion for the best 11 for season four our new left back is apparently joe gomez i'm going with a fullback on support instead of a wing back on support now I haven't really got the player to uh to play that role so it's definitely a weak part of the team only a two and a half star role ability for gomez so still looking for a new left back in the future that is for sure we've also got luke bart and silver in the defense of course uh we've also got costa as our new goalkeeper to replace allison and obviously alexander arnold there as an inverted wing back on attack again this season and uh, midfield we've got neves andre and verts that hasn't changed at all we've got nunez on the left osman up front but we've also got profundi as our new right winger at the club who's a very very exciting player so you look at the forward line here just Looks unbelievable, doesn't it? Pafundi, Verts, Osman, and Nunez. Very nice. Midfield, I don't I think the midfield could do with an upgrade, to be honest. Um, Andre hasn't really developed that well. And Neves is a very good player, but I feel like Neves as a Scondo Volante with a proper defensively minded midfielder in there would be much better for us. And of course, the left back position is looking a little bit weak, but overall, I'm fairly happy with the business I've done. I've sold the players that are over the age of 30 or close to the age of 30 for quite big money, and I've replaced them with players that are almost as good, in certain positions they are as good, uh, for all, and they're all very young as well. So hopefully this season can be very good, but most, most importantly, I'm building for the future here with Liverpool. Well, this season in season four, we're actually going to finish third this season below Newcastle and Man City. We've got two players in the Dream 11 though, in Diogo Costa, and Simone for Funday, two new signings at the club as well. So hopefully they can do very well in season four. But most importantly, the team does well. And can we get closer to winning the league title this season? And hopefully we can end off the season with another trophy for the third year in a row. Well, despite a massive clear out in season four, unfortunately, the season hasn't been good again. We're very poor in the league again. Again, fourth in the league, which is terrible. Only 72 points. We have qualified for Champions League football again, which of course is the minimum requirement, but the last three seasons we finished sixth, fourth, and fourth, which is, yeah, nowhere near good enough, has to be said. Uh, we did win two competitions, but not really two competitions you can count at all. The Friendly Cup and the European South American Club Challenge, of course, I am not counting them as trophies won. Uh, so we actually ended off the season for the first time in two seasons without a trophy, which is very disappointing. We did go far in the Champions League, though. Only our second time playing in the Champions League as well. The other two times played in the Europa League, of course. We got to the semi-final, though, which is very nice. But we lost to Tottenham in the semi-final. And uh, although it does sound pretty bad, Tottenham are the biggest club in England right now. They've won, uh, they've won their third trophy in four seasons. So can't be too harsh on the players after that. But to get so far, to not get to the finals, kind of disappointing. Also, the UEFA Super Cup, we lost the final of that, unfortunately. The FA Cup knocked down the fourth round by Man United. And the Carroll Cup knocked down the fourth round by Wolves. So the only real positive we can take from the season is our Champions League campaign. Getting to the semi-final was very nice and losing to a very, very good Tottenham side, it seems. But the league campaign, again, very disappointing. But also, the players I've signed, most of them are on the young side. And uh, hopefully, in the future, they will get better for us. 
In terms of best player of the season, that goes to Florian Verts. He got 10 goals and 17 assists, but 27 goal involvements in 55 games. I feel like he can do a lot better than that, to be honest. Osterman as well got 25 goals for the season and five assists, but he only did start 35 games in total. And Darwin Nunez got 18 goals in 52 games as well. In terms of the new signings, well, the best one was Luke Bar in terms of average rating with a 6.99. So you can see that the team didn't really click so well this season and uh, not the greatest in any competition really. Also, Buffundi only started 21 games. He only got 10 goals and five assists, so underwhelming from him. Savio, nine goals, 13 assists. Diogo Costa only got a 6.95 average rating. So season four is definitely one for us to forget again, but definitely very promising. You look at all the players' ability here. You know, we've got Florian Verts is a five-star player. We've also got Neves, Silva, Nunez, Trent, and Osman as four-and-a-half-star players as well. So if the players start to click together, hopefully the trophies can start coming in very, very quickly. But the first four seasons hasn't been great. We've won two competitions, the Europa League and the Carroll Cup. Can in season five... We win a big trophy. Can we win a league title or can we win a Champions League? Well, at the start of season five now, I sold quite a few players again. I signed quite a few players again. Not quite as much as last season. Not the same uh, sort of money we're talking about here. But in terms of players to leave us, Cody Gakpo has joined Gravenberg at Atletico Madrid. He has gone there for £32 million. No more than a fringe player these days. And obviously, he wasn't very happy with his game time over the last couple of seasons. He's on loan at Inter Milan last season, but he only, he only played one game for them in the league with one goal though, but they didn't uh, agree to sign him on a permanent transfer. But fortunately, he has joined Atletico for £32 million. So happy with that, a player not in my plans at all. Also, Esteval, the player I signed for 80K, has joined Cardiff for just 800K. Um, I feel like I've uh, sold him for a little bit cheap there, to be honest. I could have held on to him for a couple more seasons because he has got some potential about him, Esteval. So. Could be one I regret there, has to be said. But at the moment, he's not nowhere near good enough at all for us, uh, potential or ability-wise. But he has got some very good hidden hidden potential to talk of. Also, Bicicic has joined Monaco for £29.5 million. Definitely a high potential player, Bicicic. Definitely a decent player as well. But uh, I feel like it's time to cash in on him a little bit. He was in the first team last season, played 19 games in the league, but didn't start too many games, he only started two games all season, so sold him for £29.5 million. Akanji was only here for one season, but he's now 32 years of age, so I've sold him to Al Halal for £26.5 million. And the big sale to talk of is Darwin Nunez. He has joined Real Madrid for £81 million. He's been arguably one of our best players of the rebuild so far. Uh, he's got over a seven rating in three of the four seasons. He's got double digits for goals in three of the four seasons as well. So, yeah, a little bit of a, um, a shock sale, it has to be said. Also, I don't think he's a world-class player, Nunez. I think he's a very good player, but not quite a world-class player. So, he has joined Real Madrid for £81 million. Also, Kelleher, our backup goalkeeper, has decided to leave. He has joined Lille for £6 million. And another big shock is Ibrahim Canate. He has joined Real Madrid as well for £40 million. Very good centre-back, Canate, and uh, definitely we get more game time if I was in charge day-to-day. -day. He only started 13 games in the league, though. He wasn't too happy with that. Uh, he's fallen down the pecking order below, below Luke Butt and Antonio Silva. He's in his final year of his contract, so I can either risk losing him on a free transfer or sell him at the start of the season. So I opted to sell him, of course, and he's on a round of £40 million. But, yeah, I'm happy to see the back of Canate. You see here, he's a very good player, really. Got some good attributes to talk of, but... Unfortunately, Luke Bar and Silva are just slightly better than him. So those are the players to leave us. In terms of players that join us, well, five players have joined us in the summer. One signing joined us in January. That is Italo Mendes Costa, who is a regen player, signing from ATP in Brazil for £15.75 million. He has got a massive ceiling. And he is a left back who's uh, very similar to Robertson or Simicas. But unfortunately for us, he's 18 years of age and uh, he's not... He's not ready for first team football yet, it has to be said, but the potential is very high, potentially five star player. He can also play right back and centre back as well, but being five foot seven, I don't think I'm ever going to use him as centre back unless he has a massive growth spurt. But at left back, he could be absolutely unbelievable. He's got 17 technique. Uh, physically, ready. you can tell how good he'll be physically in the future, being only 18 years of age. He's a lot of Coventry for the season, but hopefully in two to three years' time, he could be a world class left back. So watch out for Mendes Costa. But this season, he won't feature at all. In terms of the other five players that join us, well, I signed a new goalkeeper in Freddie Woodman. He's actually our third choice goalkeeper. I signed him from Stoke for £5.25 million. I've also signed a new backup goalkeeper in Mamadash Vili, 
from Udinese for £21 million. Uh, he's a very good goalkeeper. As a backup goalkeeper, can't really complain about him, can you, really? Uh, he's definitely good enough to be most clubs number one in the Premier League. But of course, we have got Diogo Costa in goal. Very cheap, £21 million for a player is standard, but unfortunately, his wage demands are crazy. 165k a week is ridiculous for a backup keeper, but um, I decided to go with it in the end. Um, definitely adds a little bit of competition for Diogo Costa, but not happy with his high wage demands there. The other three players that join us, well, Nico Schlotterbeck has joined us as a new left back slash centre back option. I've signed him from Dortmund to £78 million. He's a very good player. Outstanding player, Schlotterbeck. Very versatile as well, which I like. We send back, left back, DM as well, which is very good. But look at his attributes here. Unbelievable. 16 passing, 17 tackling. Mentally, he's outstanding. Physically, he's outstanding as well. So, as a left back or as a centre back, very happy with the signing of Schlotterbeck. He's still in his, in his peak as well, only 27 years of age. So, hopefully, we'll get three or four good seasons out of him. I've also signed another centre back, and that is Pavlovic. He has joined us from PSG for £35 million. So the centre backs are looking really good now, has to be said. Got great depth at centre back. Pavlovic, not a very versatile player, which I don't like, but he only comes in here as a squad player option. He's very similar to Canati, I'd say. Not great with the ball at his feet. Not terrible either, of course, but uh, very good in the old school defenders. Um, defensive attributes like 16 marking great strength great jumping reach as well he's six foot four so definitely a very good center back Pavlovic not quite a world-class player though and the final signing I've made is Frank Kessie he joins from PSG as well for 30 million pounds he is that ball with field star player I uh, wanted to sign to be honest uh, if you look at his role ability here he's a ball midfielder isn't he he is a ball with midfielder all day all night but unfortunately for us the assistant still thinks Neves is the best option in that role. And Kessie looks like he's playing as a Segundo Flante for the season. So I can't get my head around that, to be honest, because look at his attributes for a Bill Midfield. He's got 18 teamwork, 18 work rate, 18 stamina, and 18 strength as well. Also, he adds to the penalty taken as well with 18 penalty taken. So very happy with the signing of Kessie. Um, not the complete midfielder, of course, but in his role as a DM, he's outstanding. One of the best in the game. So very happy with the signing of him. He's 30 years of age, so... Not going to get too much uh, seasons out of him, but definitely happy to signing with him. So I made a slight tweak to the tactic again for this season. I've actually put the defensive line higher, put a higher defensive line in there instead of the standard. And as you can see, I've changed the fullback on support to an inverted fullback on defend. And Luke Barres looks like he's been the best player for that uh, role this season, with Schlotterbeck uh, slotting at centre back alongside Silva. Also, I've changed the Segundo Volante to support uh, to attack as well. But as you can see there, the assistant seems to think that Kessi suits that role better. Than Neves, which I disagree with completely. Neves should be playing there. And Kessie should be playing there as a ball midfielder. But unfortunately, the assistant picks the team. And in terms of the uh, the front four, we've got Florian Verts, We've got Profunde. And we've also changed Savio. Could have gone with inverted fullback on defend. I uh, decided to change the inverted and side forward attack, sorry, to a winger on attack on the left-hand side. Savio is left-footed. Definitely suits him there. And Osman up front would be having heading, 18 heading ability. I feel like we should get more crosses into the box. And hopefully, Savio will do that. And they might fire us to win the league title. We shall see. The first four seasons have been disappointing. We have won two competitions, though, which is nice. But we should have won more than that, really. In terms of the season preview, again, second in the league. We did finish uh, second in the league. And we've got two players in the Dream 11 again in Diogo Costa and Florian Vert. So the first four seasons have been underwhelming. We have been bailed out a little bit by winning those two competitions. But we yet to win a real big competition. Um, can we do that in Season 5 with either the League or the Champions League? Well, the first four seasons of the League campaign have been nowhere near good enough. But thankfully, in Season 5, we have won our first League title. We won the League title with 86 points, 5 points clear of Tottenham, who are our biggest rivals these days, has to be said. We're the best team in England. But we have won the League title, 5 points clear of them, 7 points clear of Man City as well. So that is very, very nice. Not our highest points tally in the League, though. That came in the first season with 88 points, but... It doesn't matter what the points tally is. It matters what, uh, what position you finish in. We finished first in the league and won the league title. So that's very nice. The Champions League, one disastrous. We got to the quarterfinal, but unfortunately, we got knocked out by Bayern Munich. The FA Cup as well, got to the semi-final of that, but lost to Aston Villa. And the Carroll Cup, we got to the semi-final of that as well, but we lost to Arsenal, unfortunately. So we got very far in every competition. We won the league title, of course, which is very nice. But the FA Cup and the Carroll Cup, it would have been nice to win one of those as well, win a double, but unfortunately wasn't meant to be but thankfully we've won the league title for the first time in season five so that is very very nice 
a little bit surprising to see us win it since we've been so bad the last three seasons, but doesn't matter now. We've won the league title. That is very, very nice for us. In terms of best player of the season, that actually goes to Savio in his new role as a winger on attack on the left wing there. He got 14 goals and 15 assists, so it seems like the tactical tweak I made certainly was beneficial this season. Uh, Diogo Costa was second best player of the season with 7.19 average rating, so it seems like we called on him this season, but shows you how important it is to have a very good goalkeeper. But also, look at that. Third best goalkeeper, uh, third best player of the season was our backup goalkeeper, Mamadashvili, with 21 games played for him and a 7.17 rating. So the goalkeepers did very well in Season 5 and probably fired us towards winning the league title. Trent with a great season, has to be said. He got 21 assists in 42 starts this season. Florian Verts got 10 goals and 12 assists. And Victor Osman got 32 goals for the season. So great from him. So in Season 5, we won our first league title, which is very nice. Our third competition won in total in five seasons. Can we defend our crown, though, in Season 6? Well, in Season 6, we've got five new signings to talk of. But first of all, let's get to the players that have left the club. Andre has left the club. He has joined Napoli for £64 million. Only signed it for £40 million. So very happy to sail with him. Unfortunately, he didn't really develop to be the great player I thought he might be. Uh, he doesn't really have great potential as a foot manager, but... He didn't really develop to be a uh, yeah, a very good player for us, has to be said. He was a little bit underwhelming in the DM position. As you can see, only one season he got over a 7 rating. So he's not really quite good enough for us. But to get £64 million for him, I'm very, very happy with that. Also, Harvey Elliott, a player who's been a fringe player, really. Obviously, as I said, if I ran the club day to day, he'd be getting a lot more game time for me. Because I feel like he's a great player, especially as a... Uh, a number nine, a number 10 player, sorry. He has gone to Bayern Munich for 56 million pounds. Also, Jarrell Quonsa has gone to Damak in Saudi Arabia for 24 million pounds. Definitely a good squad player, centre back, but uh, with the players we've got now, he's fallen down the pecking order, so he has left the club as well. And also, Frank Kessie is only here for one season, unfortunately. He's gone to Al Halal for 35 million pounds. He did quite well last season, actually. He played 25 games, he got five goals and three assists, but the role I signed him for, he's not getting used at. So I don't really see him as a, a great Segundo Volante player to have. So he has left us for Al Hilal. And Mamadashvili, our backup goalkeeper, only signed him last season as well. He has joined Barcelona for £37 million. Um, not too happy, not too uh, sad to see him leave, really. He was on big wages for a backup goalkeeper, 165k a week. And also when Barcelona came in for him, he was very excited to leave us to go to Barcelona. As you can imagine, being a backup for Liverpool, then a first choice goalkeeper for Barcelona, is pretty much an easy decision, really. So he has left the club as well. So in terms of the five players that have joined us, uh, new centre-back first of all, that is Roger Ibanez. He has joined us from Benfica, a team I've signed many players from this, uh, in this rebuild, it seems. He's joined us for £27 million. Um, I signed him because he's a, a very good centre-back, first of all. But he's also a very good DM as well. So I saw him as a versatile player to bring in. 29 years of age. He'll be probably leaving us end of the season or next couple of seasons. So only here for a season or two. But very good player, has to be said, as a DM or as a centre-back. Happy with the signing of him. The next signing was the most expensive one by quite a distance. And that is Archie Gray. He has joined us from Leeds for 96 million pounds definitely very expensive but he's a homegrown player in england of course and uh, we're lacking a little bit in that department now so i had to look to sign some english players or homegrown players and archie gray was one of those players a uh, very versatile player can play dm center midfield attack midfield all right back as well so very happy to signing him 22 years of age got two cats for england already so that's very nice potentially four and a half star player um, he's not worth 96 million pounds clearly that is for sure he's probably worth half of that really but if he does develop more from this point hopefully he'll be worth that in the future and um, hopefully he'll be a key player for us we shall see the next player assigned is another English player that is Amari Kellyman from Aston Villa for 49 million pounds um, he's not really a player I've really heard of really to be honest um, but he looks very good he's developed very nicely for Aston Villa in this uh, virtual universe you can play anywhere in the forward line as well which is great you can play up front attack midfield on the left or on the right as well um and he's very good he actually reminds me a lot of another aston villa player in jacob ramsey in terms of his uh his rollability and his actual attributes he's got lots of 15s and 16s going on here so um yeah very good player very good squad player and he's still only 22 years of age so yeah not got quite the ceiling of archie gray but 
in my opinion, looks like a very good versatile forward to have to bring off the bench and make a difference in games. So, yeah, very happy the signing of him. Only £49 million, a lot less than Archie Gray's £96 million. And the next two players to join us are two um, two cheaper players. Uh, Railson Zago has joined us from Alesca Monero in Brazil for £15.5 million. He's only 20 years of age, but he's uh, got a very good potential about him. Potentially five stars. Mentally, he's outstanding. You look at him here, 19 decisions, 18 determination, great composure, anticipation, 18 teamwork, 17 work, great 16 vision. You can see the potential here for Zago. Physically, uh, needs to improve, but again, still quite decent. And technically, uh, needs to improve as well, but again, pretty good. 17 technique is very nice. He can play DM, center midfield, or attack midfield. He's only here as a squad player, but in the future, he could be a key player for us if he does fulfill his potential. And the last player to join us is a new backup goalkeeper. Not as good as Mounas Vili, has to be said, but I only signed him for £11 million from Reims in uh, in France. And um, he's on a lot less money as well. Less, He's on 100 k less a week than Mounas Vili. So more like it for a goalkeeper, a backup goalkeeper. But to be honest, I'd like to have a, a slightly better backup keeper than Juve in case something does happen to Diogo Costa. But hopefully nothing happens to Costa. So in terms of the team for this season, I haven't changed the tactic at all for this season. As you can imagine, we won the league last season, so I don't feel the need to change things here. The only real change in terms of the starting eleven is uh, Pratty, who's coming to the Scondo Volante attack position. So apparently none of our none of the players I've signed are good enough to be a regular starter for the club, such as Juve, Ibanez and Gray, for example, and Zago, of course, and Kellyman. Also, Kanazun is in the, uh, the Liverpool squad now as well. He's actually been in the last couple of seasons, I think. Yeah, last season's in the first team, eight goals and four assists for him. So he is now in the first team for the first time, been on loan the last couple of seasons. Definitely a very good player, not quite world class, but definitely a very good player. Great score option to have at a club. So yeah, last season we won the league title, of course. Uh, we got quite far in every competition, really. Could have won a, uh, a couple of trophies last season, but most importantly, we did win the league title. Can we defend the league title, though, in season six? Well, thankfully, we can defend our title in Season 6. Back-to-back -back league titles for us, and this time in Season 6, very, very convincing. 95 points for us, 18 points clear of Man City in second place. So it's a one-horse race the entire season, basically. We also got a plus 70 goal difference. So the first four league campaigns were very underwhelming, but the last two have been very good. Won the league title last season, and we defended our crown this season with 95 points. Unfortunately, the Champions League was underwhelming. We knocked out the Tottenham again, this time in the round of 16. The FA Cup knocked down the fifth round by Man United. We got to the final of the Carroll Cup, but we lost that, unfortunately. We did, however, though, win the Community Shield as well. Do we count that as a double? Probably not, but at least we won another competition there in the Community Shield. We actually lost the final of the Carroll Cup as well to Tottenham 3-0, uh, a brace from Bazuma, Bazuma in that game. So. Tottenham knocked us out of the Carroll Cup and the Champions League, unfortunately, but thankfully for us, thankfully for us, we beat them in the league title and won it very, very convincingly. In terms of best player of the season, well, Profundi has had his best player of the uh, best season at the club so far and uh, starting to look like the player I thought he'd be. Uh, 15 goals and 18 assists for him. Also, Florian Vert's got 17 goals and 17 assists. That is very nice. Savio, 11 goals and 15 assists. And Victor Osman with 37 goals in 48 games for this season. So going forward, looking extremely strong, has to be said. Also, Kanazun as our squad player got 16 goals and 7 assists as well. So going forward, we're absolutely brilliant this season. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't win another double or anything like that. We only won the league title again. Uh, but it is back-to-back -back league titles for us in Season 5 and Season 6. What will Season 7 bring? Well, only four signings to talk of in Season 7. Uh, interesting enough, though, three of them are English players. In terms of the players to leave us, though, first player to leave us was Federico Riella. He's on the Juventus for £2.6 million. He is a youngster, a regen, who hasn't really got high potential, so don't really need to mention him much. Uh, Mendes Costa, by the way, he's gone loan to Villarreal for this season. Uh, he's looking very, very good. As you can see, he's developed very, very nicely. Physically, it's outstanding, but still, he needs to improve a little bit more, I'd say. One more loan out for him, at least. We'll see how he does. Still only a two-and-a-half-star player, but next season, he could be in the first team. We shall see. Matteo Pratti has gone to Real Madrid for £57 million as well. Um... He's a good squad player to have Pratty, but I've still struggled really to find that great DM player for the rebuild. Um, did quite well last season with six goals and six assists, but decided to cash in on him and send him to, uh, to Real Madrid for £57 million. Well, long-serving player Joe Gomez has left the club as well. He's gone to Al-Hilal for £29 million. He's 32 years of age now. 
A very versatile defender though and uh, appeared in lots of games over the rebuild for me here. Played in at least 30 games in the league every single season. So, been a very important player for us Gomez, but now he's 32, time for him to leave. Uh, Ibanez as well, only lasted one season. He has gone to Nice for £34.5 million. Pounds. And Curtis Jones, a player I haven't mentioned at all in the rebuild, has joined Al Fire for £19.5 million. Pounds. Unfortunately for him, he did not get any game time at all in the rebuild. As you can see here, he only started, um, well, he only got in double digits for a league campaign once in the uh, in the second season. So he wasn't featuring enough, nowhere near enough has to be said. But also he's not good enough uh, due to that lack of game time, lack of development. So he has gone to Al Fire for just 19 and a half million pounds. In terms of the players to join us, well, the first player to join us was Callum Doyle. I signed him from Aston Villa for 56 million pounds. Definitely expensive for a player of his standard, but he's still only 25 years of age. And also he's another versatile player. who can play as an inverted fullback at the left back position and at centre back as well. So I'm happy with the signing, signing of him. And also he's a homegrown player in the nation, which is definitely very important. Next player, to, next player I signed is another English player. That is Chris Rigg. He has joined us from Sunderland for £26 million. Very cheap for a player of his standard, Chris Rigg. Uh, he's only been playing the Championship. Well, he played the Premier League a couple of seasons as well, has to be said. But been playing mainly in the Championship for uh, Sunderland. But he's still only 22 years of age. Just turned 22 as well. Very versatile. And uh, still got some very good potential about him. So, yeah, very happy to sign up a player of his standard for just £26 million. The next English player I signed, though, was much more expensive. And that is Lewis Miley from Fierce Rivals Newcastle for £105 million. But he is a great player, Lewis Miley, in this FM. Where he got 28 caps for England and five goals at the age of 23. He can also play DM, centre, mid centre midfield and attacking midfield as well. He's a very, very complete midfielder. He's very good in every single department, as you can see here. Uh, he can play Segondo Volante on attack. He can play as a ball midfielder if needed. He can play as an attacking midfielder if needed as well. So very happy to sign him Miley. English uh, English homegrown talent player to talk of. Very expensive, but also a very good, versatile player. And last but definitely not least, I've got a new defender to talk of. Not English. His name is Turkey Usta. I signed him from PSV for £62 million. He can play as a right back or as a centre back. Doesn't really suit the role playing at right back. The inverted wing back on attack, of course. He definitely suits the centre back role of playing, though. Ball playing, defender on defend. Um, only 21 years of age, already a four and a half star player apparently, so a very, very good player. But also, I feel like he still needs to improve a little bit. Hopefully, he does. Well, we have won the league title back to back. It will be hard to win it for three seasons in a row though, but we are the favourites to win the league title this season. We've also got four players in the Dream 11 in Costa, Usta, Vert and Pafundi. So the last two seasons have been very good. We've won two league titles in the last two seasons. Can we make it three in a row? in season seven. Unfortunately, we could not make it three in a row in season seven. And unfortunately, we left off the season without a trophy again, which is very disappointing. We finished third in the league, plus 67 goal difference is very nice. No problems with that, but only 84 points, 10 points behind Tottenham, we finished first in the league. We had a very strong ending to the season, as you can see there with the recent form, but yeah, not good enough to finish with 84 points after winning the league title back to back. But what can you do? It's going to be very hard to win the league title every single season, of course, with, with teams such as Tottenham, Man City, Arsenal, Man United, Newcastle, Chelsea, for example. The Champions League, though, was very disappointing again. Knocked down in the round of 16, this time by Barcelona. The FA Cup and the Kawa Cup knocked down in the fourth round of both of them as well. And the Community Shield, we finished as runner-up. So, all in all, a very disappointing season. A... Um, Seems like a bit of a hangover season after winning back-to-back -back league titles. Very, very disappointing. We should be winning at least one competition every single season here with Liverpool. So to not do that in season seven, very, very underwhelming. To be honest, though, it's a bit of a confusing season because the performances was definitely there. In terms of the goal difference, the goals conceded as well. You know, everything just pointed towards a great season. Look at the average rating of the players here as well. So very, very confusing one. We didn't go too far in any competition, but um, I guess the... Uh, the the positive we can take from that is the tactic is working to an extent because the players are doing well, but the results didn't come this season for us, unfortunately. Florian Verts, though, with 21 goals and 25 assists this season in 50 games, but it came in a season where we didn't win a competition. Bufundi, with another great season, 17 goals, 19 assists for him. Savio, again, 15 goals, 15 assists. Diogo Costa has been an amazing replacement for Allison. Uh, Lewis Miley in his first season at the club, 12 goals and 9 assists for him. And Victor Osman got 31 goals and 6 assists again for this season. So as I said, the performances were there. 
The data hub, you look at the data hub, looks good. Goals per game, conceded per game, everything looks good. But unfortunately, what doesn't look good is there's no trophy in the cabinet for season seven. Can we add another trophy to the cabinet though in season eight? Well, in season eight, only three new signings to talk of, but some big players have left the club. The first player to leave the club was actually our backup goalkeeper. Yvan Juf has joined Altai for £27 million. As I said, when I signed him, not really a uh, not really the best backup option we could have at the club, so not too sad to see him leave. We also almost doubled our money on him as well, so fairly happy with the sale of Juf there. Uh, the next player to leave us, though, was a big one. Victor Osterman, he's been very good for us in the last few seasons. He has joined Al Halal for £65 million. Pounds. He's now 31 years of age, as you can see there. So the decline is going to start happening now. He was also in the final year of his contract. He's not interested in renewing his contract. So I had to sell him, unfortunately. But he's been very good for us. Not quite consistent all throughout the, uh, the seasons here. But he has got over 20 goals in four, of his six, uh, in four of his six seasons in the league. And his best season came when he scored 38 goals in the 2029 season. So he was definitely a very good striker to have. Austin men, not the best I've seen. Uh, his average rating, his uh, 2029 season was by far his best average rating for a season, but he was definitely a player we're going to miss. But £65 million for a 31 year old is still very nice. Also, Chris Rigg, unfortunately, didn't get the game time last season, so he's not happy. He's on loan to Frankfurt for the season to get him some game time. Uh, Pavlovic has gone to Saudi Arabia as well. He has joined Al Itihad for £53 million. Only a backup centre back to talk of Pavlovic, so not too sad to see him leave. Also got uh, also got prof on him as well, but he's done good for us the last three seasons. And also Mendes Costa, our highly rated youngster, he's on loan to Bayer Leverkusen for this season as well. If you look at him here, he's starting to look like that player I was telling you about. Got great potential. He's got nine cats from Brazil already now, 21 years of age. Physically, he's looking unbelievable as well, uh, but he still needs to develop a little bit more, I'd say. He's a three-star player now. Uh, could be in the squad, that is for sure. Definitely a squad option to have, but I wanted to get come back into the first team as uh, one of our starting defenders. So hopefully, this season at Bayer Leverkusen, he gets another very good season and he'll come back and be a regular starter for us. He should do if he does fulfill his potential. So those are the players to leave us. Obviously, the big one is Victor Rosterman. He has joined um, Al Hilal for £65 million. Pounds. I've signed a new goalkeeper first of all, Callum McKenna. He has joined us from Bournemouth for £26 million. Pounds. Uh, great thing about him is he, he uh, counts towards the home grade registration rules. And also, he's a better goalkeeper than Yvan Juf. He is Scottish. He's 23 years of age. He's got 43 caps for them, so he's a Scottish number one. And he's a very good goalkeeper. As a backup goalkeeper, can't complain too much. He says he's a two-star player, but... I feel like that's been a little bit harsh, really. I feel like he's more of a two and a half, potentially three star player. So, yeah, happy with the signing of McKenna. As I said, he's a homegrown player in the nation, which is always beneficial. And um, he's quite good, quite good. The next player I sign is a, uh, a regen player. And he is our new striker to talk of to replace Victor Osterman. And his name is Vittorio, Vittorio, sorry. Bertani joins us from Roma for £103 million. He's 21 years of age. He can play on the right as well, add up front, which is very nice. So more versatility than Osterman. He's got 17 finishing. He's very quick as well. Not quite as quick as Osterman. He's got 16 stamina though, 16 technique. Uh, not as good as in the, in the air as Osterman as well. We actually compare the two players here. I still say Osterman is slightly better than uh, Batani, really, but uh, Batani offers more than Osterman in other areas. He's more versatile, playing on the right. He's also 10 years younger as well. So you look at him here, not too much difference between the two players, apart from in the air and speed. And Batani is still developing. So uh, definitely a good replacement for Osterman, but not the perfect replacement, I'd say. But hopefully... He proved me a little bit wrong this season and uh, turned out to be a world-class striker for us. We shall see. And the last player that's joined us is a, a, a blast from the past in Ibrahim Akanate. He has rejoined the club from Real Madrid for £50 million. Uh, I was looking for a new centre-back because, of course, I've sold Pavlovic this season. And uh, Kanate, he popped up. I thought, why not? I didn't want to sell him in the first place. I wanted to stay at the club because I feel like he's a very good centre-back. But he wanted to leave. But thankfully, he wanted to rejoin the club. He's 31 years of age, so uh, £50 million is definitely a little bit risky. But he's still very good. He's got good pace still. He's got good strength. Natural fitness is quite high. So hopefully, we can get two or three good seasons out of Canate. But of course, the big uh, big uh, thing to talk of this season is our new striker. Austin Men's been leading the line for the last six seasons now. But now we've got a new one in Batani, who has replaced Osimhen. He is 10 years younger, not quite as good in certain aspects of his game, but hopefully he can develop this season, and by the end of the season, he could be as good as Osimhen, 
if not better. So if we look at the starting 11 for this season, hasn't really changed too much in the last few seasons. Miley is now a regular starter for us as a seconda volante on attack. Did very well last season. Uh, but now we've got a new striker in Batani over Osimhen. He's a four and a half star player apparently. I'd say he's more a three and a half, four star player. So we shall see how he does. Last season for Rome, we got 17 goals in the league and 24 goals in all competitions. So if he ends the season 25 to 30 goals, I'm very happy. Last season though was disappointing. No trophy to talk of. What can we do in Season 8? Can we win the league title again? Or can we win another competition? Well, unfortunately, I don't know what's happened in these last two seasons here. Season 5 and Season 6, of course, we won the league title back-to-back. -back, but in Season 7 and Season 8, we've ended the season's trophyless. We finished fourth in the league this season with 77 points, which is absolutely bizarre. Terrible. Absolutely terrible, effectively. 11 points clear of Wolves in fifth place. So, uh, no danger of uh, falling... Well... Fifth place is Champions League football these days anyway, don't they? So 14 points clear of local rivals Everton in sixth place, but that is not the thing we're looking for. We're not looking for Champions League finishes in the season now. We're looking for winning the league title. We've won it twice in a row. We know we can do it. So to finish fourth in the league is just, yeah, terrible. Absolutely terrible, has to be said. The Champions League again, underwhelming. Knocked down the quarterfinal by Napoli. The FA Cup knocked down the quarterfinal by Chelsea. We got to the Carrow Cup final again, but we lost that again, unfortunately. So... Season 8, very disappointed, really. We actually lost the final of the Champions League, uh, the final of the Carrow Cup, sorry. I wish we was in the final of the Champions League. We lost the final of the Carrow Cup to Chelsea. 1-1, lost on penalties as well. It seems like it was the penalty final, really, because they scored a penalty in the 18th minute. We scored a penalty in the 22nd minute, and then no other goals apart from the penalty shootout. So, yeah, the penalty final, we'll call this one. Shoulder up, he missed the penalty. We lost 5-4 on the penalty shootout. So, that is very disappointing, but overall, it's just a terrible season, isn't it, really? Terrible season. The biggest highlight, biggest highlight was beating Pauk 10-1 in the Champions League, it seems. So, other than that, it's just been terrible, really. Best player of the season, though, was Savio again with 14 goals and 19 assists for him. Verts, 10 goals and 15 assists for him as well. And 21 goals and 15 assists for Pafundi as well. Also, new signing, Batani got 26 goals and 7 assists. So, he did do quite well, has to be said. Uh, Lewis Miley again was quite good. Uh, Kanazoom was quite good as well. But last season, we didn't win a trophy. And the performances were a lot better. This season, we didn't win a trophy again. And the performance dipped a little bit. So, the last two seasons have been very underwhelming. I thought we were coming towards the end of the rebuild here. But, obviously, I can't leave it like this. With trophyless two seasons in a row. Hopefully, Season 9 can be much better for us. Well, unfortunately, the last two seasons have been very, very underwhelming. I thought we were making a big progress here in the rebuild. Back-to-back -back league titles. But the last two seasons, not won a trophy. So... Definitely taking a dip, it has to be said, but can we end up the rebuild strong here? Can we do very well in Season 9? Uh, we've signed four new players, get to them in a second, but in terms of the players to leave us, well, first of all, club legend, local hero, Trent Alexander-Arnold has left the club now. He's gone to Al Itihad for £27 million. He's 32 years of age now, about to turn 33. Uh, Physically, he's going to start to decline this season. He's also in his final year of his contract. I thought it was right to sell him. He did want to sign the new contract, but with Mendes Costa, the youngster I'm talking about, the youngster fullback we've got, I feel like it's time to give him a go in the team and time for Trent to lead the club. So he has gone to out it. He had been a very good player for us, though. Some seasons have been a lot better than others, it has to be said. For example, last season, yeah, last season was very poor, and that really swung my uh, mind to sell him, really. Only three assists for him to talk of, a 6.86 average rating, so... Unfortunately, Trent has left the club now, but he's now 32, almost 33. Also, Canate only lasted the season, so that was a little bit of an underwhelming signing. Signing for £50 million. I sold him for £17 million the next summer, so I don't know quite what I was thinking there with that signing, really. Uh, Aaron Backhouse, only a youngster at the club. He has joined Wolves for £8.25 million. Nico Schlotterbeck has joined AC Milan for £40 million. He's been very good for us the last few seasons. He did four seasons in total, been very, very good, but... Now he's in his final year of his contract as well, 31 years of age. So I opted to sell him to AC Milan for 40 million. And also Shelderup has joined Tottenham for 55 million pounds as well. Very happy to sign him of a sale of him, sorry. Um, didn't do very well for us, has to be said, any season. He did get five goals and 10 assists. He was only a squad player to have. So to get 55 million pounds for a squad player, very, very happy. So let's get to the players that have joined us now. Well, the first player to join us is Teo Hernandez. Uh, he signed for £17.5 million. Pounds. Uh, as you can see, or as you know, he is an attacking left-back. So I'll switch things up for this season. With Trent leaving, I've got more of a, uh, a defensive-minded right-back. And the left-back has changed from inverted full-back to a more attacking left-back. Teo Hernandez, though, has been signed as a backup left-back. Uh, he's still very quick. 
for a 33 year old almost 34 as well he's got 16 acceleration 17 pace uh, still very good but of course the decline will happen very very quickly but as I said, he's only here as a backup left back to Costa. I've also signed Uke Meccano from Bayern Munich as a new centre back for £20 million. Uh, needed to get a player, a new centre back in. And Uke Meccano, although he's 32 years of age now, he is still very good as a backup centre back. So happy with the signing of him. And Spike Britz, I signed him from Man City for only £1 million as our new third choice keeper. Uh, I've seen him turn out to be much better than this in foot manager. He's definitely got a very high potential. Um, unfortunately, he hasn't fulfilled it here with uh, Man City, but he's only here as a third choice goalkeeper. So uh, happy with signing him, only one million pounds, dirt cheap. The big signing of the season nine though is Francisco. He's a striker or a forward option player signing for 150 million pounds. And he is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. As you can see here, he got 19 finishing, 18 composure. Physically, he's outstanding with 19 acceleration as well. 17 off the ball. He's 23 years of age. And I feel like he, you know what? Looking at him here, he looks very similar to Mo Salah, really. Um, not as good as men, not as good mentally as Mo Salah, but in his other departments, he looks very similar to him. But I see him more as a striker. We've got some great right wingers to talk of, such as Buffundi, Savio, Francisco, Batani. We're definitely not lacking in that department. And interesting enough about him, he has only been more of a squad player for Real Madrid. He came through their youth system, so he's come here at Liverpool now as an important player. And hopefully, he shows us how important he is. So I'm very happy to signing of Francisco. So if we look at the uh, the starting uh, the tactic for this season, well, the first two seasons where I played with a new uh, new tactic I went with went very well, won back-to-back -back league titles. But the last two seasons hasn't gone as well. So I'll switch things up a little bit this season. As you can see, I've changed the right back from an inverted wing back on attack to a full back on support. It definitely suits Usta more that role. And uh, he's an unhappy man, Did, was not happy with his game time last season. So hopefully he'll be happy this season. And left back is now Mendes Costa. He's now a four star player for us. And as you can see here, it was right to let him out for another season to buy Leverkusen because he's come back and he is an outstanding player for us. Physically, he's unbelievable. 18 pace, 18 balance, 17 acceleration, 17 agility and 17 stamina he is our new outstanding fullback at the club now Trent has left the club so hopefully he can fill Trent's boots very very nicely also he can play either right back as well he's both footed and he can be centre back as well but with the uh, the tactic I'm playing now it definitely suits Costa as a left back since I'm playing as a wing back on attack I've changed Savio from winger on attack to an inside forward on support which is definitely a risky thing to do since he's left footed and he's done very well as a winger on attack but with Costa bombing forward I feel like it's the right thing to do I've also changed the formation from a 4-2-3-1 four, four, to a 4-3-3 four, three, three effectively with Neves as a ball infield on defend. I've changed Miley to a box-to-box -box midfielder and Verts to a Mazzala on attack. And of course, we've got Profundi, Savio and Batani. Uh, apparently, Francisco is not good enough to make the starting eleven, but I disagree with that. Batani is another great forward option to have, so I feel like we've, we've replaced Osman now with two players in Batani and Francisco. Hopefully, the new formation and the slight tweak to the tactic can get us back to winning ways in season nine. Well, I definitely made a big risk changing the formation for the first time in the rebuild in season nine, but it's definitely a risk that has paid off. We have ended season nine with a domestic treble and also one win away from winning the quadruple as well, unfortunately. But in terms of the league, well, not the greatest points tally has to be said, 83 points for us. Two points clear of Man City in second place, but doesn't matter what a points total is, it matters that we win the league title, and that is what we have done, our third league title in five seasons. The Champions League, we got to the final, but unfortunately we lost the final. We'll see who we lost to in a second, but we won the FA Cup, and we won the Carabao Cup as well, so season nine has definitely been very, very successful. The last two seasons, not a trophy to talk of, very underwhelming, but I changed things up this season in terms of the formation, something I don't usually do. Definitely took a risk, but definitely a risk that paid off. We were one win away from winning every competition this season. Now let's look at we lost in the Champions League final first of all. We lost to Real Madrid in the Champions League final, unfortunately. We lost to Real Madrid 2-0. Two, uh, two goals from Camavinga and Stroikens there, so that's disappointing. But we beat Wolves in the FA Cup final 3-1. But Fundy were bracing that game. And we beat Chelsea 1-0 in the Carabao Cup final. But Fundy seems like a big, uh, big game player. He scored in that final as well to win us that competition. So all in all, brilliant season really, but... One win away from a quadruple, that is devastating, but at least you won a domestic treble. Our first time winning a treble in the rebuild as well, so that is very, very nice. The league title, the FA Cup, and the Carabao Cup. Well, not really any 
outstanding performance of the season, apart from Profunde, who got 32 goals and 13 assists in just 54 games this season, playing as a right winger. He's an outstanding player. As you can see here, he's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. His Italian record is unbelievable as well. 77 goals and 40, 77 caps, sorry, and 43 goals for them. He's a key player for us, has to be said. And he had his best season of the club this season. Uh, Mendes Costa as well. I've talked about him quite a lot. He's coming to the first team. He's now a four and a half star player for us. And he got three goals and 14 assists. And he continues to develop every single season. As you can see, it's unbelievable. Absolutely an outstanding player. Physically, one of the best in the game, I'd say. Savio as well changed his role a little bit for this uh, formation. It seemed to work out very well. He's still got nine goals and 18 assists, despite playing as an inside forward and support instead of his natural winger on attack. So that's very nice. And Francisco, our new signing, got 32 goals and six assists in the season as well in 56 games. So he did very well as well. Vert's got 15 goals and 13 assists as well. Luis Miley, again, nine goals, 10 assists. Silver had a good season. Costa had a good season as well. So. Season 9, thankfully, we're back to winning ways and we're back in style, winning a domestic treble in Season 9. What can we do, though, in Season 10? Well, at the start of Season 10 now, of course, Season 9 was very, very successful. One win away from a quadruple and we lifted a treble in the end, winning everything domestically, so that is very nice. I've signed four new players, get to them in a second. In terms of the players to leave us, though, Up Meccano, he only lasted one season. He's gone to out it. He had for £12 million. He's now 33, so not really too surprising. James Richard as well. James Richard, sorry. A player who came from my youth system. He's gone to Sunderland for £8 million. Uh, Kellyman, unfortunately, didn't work out for him. He's on Newcastle for £15 million. Didn't get a game time at all. And Kanazoon has joined West Ham for £52 million. Very good player, Zoon. Uh, physically, not the best, really, but technically, he's very, very good. But unfortunately for him, We've got another German, well, he's Turkish now. He does start off as German. Uh, we've got another German player, Florian Verts, who's just a much better attacker midfielder than him. So he wasn't happy with his game time. He has gone to West Ham for £52 million. But he definitely served the purpose, that is for sure. Definitely had some good seasons for us. And we, all, well, we also made a big profit on him as well. So very happy with that. Callum Doyle has joined Al Khalid for £18.5 million. And Teo Hernandez, he has joined Atletico Madrid for £7.75 million. So in terms of the players to join us, well, we've got a new centre-back, a, uh, a better option than Upamecano has to be said, another French one. It seems like there's, there's so many French centre-backs in the game, it's absolutely ridiculous. There's like there's like 50 French centre-backs who are very good, it's outstanding. But anyway, El Chadil Bicciabo has joined us from Monaco for £61 million. So definitely expensive, but he's only 27 years of age. Very, very good, complete uh, centre-back. Very uh, good in the air, 18 jumping reach, 18 pace as well. 17 strength, 16 marking, 16 positioning. A very, very good centre-back to have. And also still relatively young as well, which is very nice. Two more players have joined us as well. That is Vyacheslav Mazurin, who has joined us in Dinamo Osko for £6.5 million. Pounds. I pretty much run out of money at this point. I needed a backup left back. Of course, I sold Teo Hernandez. I've signed Mazurin. He's Russian. He's 20 years of age. Uh, not amazing, but he's only back up to Mendes Costa. He's still got high potential as well. Uh, hopefully, he can... Uh, Develop this season, we shall see. And Zarko Zivkovic has joined us from Partizan for just £5.75 million. He is a new backup centre back option now at the club, still developing. Uh, ideally, I'd loan both those players out, um, players out but unfortunately, uh, I ran out of funds and I needed to fill up the squad. So Zivkovic is here in the first team as well. Seven caps for Serbia. Uh, as you can see, he's not quite ready for first team football, but he's still got high potential and very cheap as well. But the big signing to talk of of season 10 is, of course, Noah Darvic. 16 years of age in real life, playing for Barcelona. We are signing for £105 million. He is a great player to have. Um, why have I signed him since his best position in attack midfield? Well, I signed him because he can play with right or left wing as well. And uh, he's outstanding, basically. I, I tried to sign a, um, a new left winger player to have because I feel like... Uh, Need a better left winger than Savio in terms of the role ability. Uh, I couldn't really find that player, so Darvich was just screaming out for me, uh, screaming out to me in terms of the price uh, 103 million pounds, 105 million pounds. Definitely very expensive, but just about can afford him, and he's an outstanding player to have. Technically, he's outstanding. Very similar to Verts, I'd say, although I'd still say Verts is slightly better. But Darvich can play on the right, can play on the left as well. And he's only 25 years of age, so very happy with the signing of Darvich. Two amazing German attacking midfielders we've got now in Darvich and Wurz. 
So, of course, last season we won the league title again, thankfully, and uh, with a new tactic, a uh, new formation to talk of as well. And uh, this season I've not changed that at all, obviously. In terms of new players into the starting 11, well, there is none. There is none at all. Well, apparently, Batani is our best right winger at the club. I tend to disagree. We've got Profundi here as our best player last season. Arguably best, one of the best players at the club. Not a starting player, apparently. But that just shows you how good our depth is now. We've got Profundi and Darvich, who apparently don't make the starting 11. The assistant's best starting 11. So that is rather scary how good our forward line is now. Miley, Verts, and Neves in midfield is outstanding. Mendes Costa is unbelievable now. The team is looking almost complete, I'd say. Last season, we won a treble. We lost in the Champions League final, though. Can we go one further in, in Season 10? And can we lift the Champions League for the first time in the rebuild? Well, the answer to that question is, yes, we can. We won the Champions League. We beat Barcelona in the final 3-1 after extra time. And we also won the league title as well, which was very surprising because the start of the season was absolutely dreadful. I was tearing my hair out. I have no hair, but you can tell what I mean. That's how bad it was. 85 points we finished off with, which is very nice. But look at the start of the season. It was absolutely horrendous. We had no chance to win the league title at all. But thankfully for, thankfully for us, we had a great ending to the season. And Chelsea completely capitulated. They were strong favourites for the league title. But they were absolutely terrible in the last 10 games of the season. Well, we were absolutely brilliant. We lost the final game of the season, but that didn't cost us at all. Before that point, we were absolutely amazing. And we won the Champions League final as well. So ended off season 10 with the league title and the Champions League, which is very, very nice. Unfortunately, we couldn't defend our crown in the FA Cup and the Carroll Cup. Knocked down the same final by Chelsea in the FA Cup and knocked down the quarter final by Arsenal in the Carroll Cup. We also finished as runner-up in the Community Shield as well. But most importantly, we won the Champions League and we won the league title as well. The two big ones, we won them. We beat Barcelona 3-1 after extra time. Profundi actually got us the equaliser in the 78th minute. And in the extra time, Mendes Costa and Bishiabo with the winner there in that game. So, wow. That must have been a great uh, great game for the fans. Brilliant ending to the game. And thankfully, won the Champions League for the first time. And of course, we won the league title as well, which is absolutely brilliant. In terms of the squad as well, well, best player of the season actually goes to Mendes Costa with five goals and nine assists. Only a 7.09 average rating. So, not really a standout performer for the season. But it seems like the team did very well together. But also, the first, uh, first 15 games or so of the season was absolutely terrible. Uh, Gerard Neves... Did very well as well. 13 goals and 5 assists for him. Savio got 9 goals and 16 assists. New signing Darvich was top goal scorer. 25 goals and 4 assists. And Lewis Miley got 11 goals and 11 assists as well. Also, I should mention that we actually had two players got damaged crucial ligaments for the season. That was Archie Gray, who only started 7 games in total. And Francisco. He also damaged his crucial ligaments. So, in a season where two key players were out for 7 to 8 months, we still won the league and the Champions League. So, that is the end of the rebuild, guys, because I feel like that's a, a great way to leave things off. We won a domestic treble last season, and we won the uh, league title and Champions League here in Season 10 as well. Not quite the best rebuild I've done, I'd say. Uh, I feel like we should have won more trophies than this. But in the end, we ended up finishing off with... At the end of the rebuild here, we ended up finish, we finished off with one Champions League, of course. We also got to one final last season. So back-to-back -back finals. Thankfully, we went one further this season. We also won one Europa League as well, of course. In 2026, so two European trophies, very nice. Uh, we got obviously lost the UEFA Super Cup final in 2026. In the league, we won four league titles in total, four league titles in six seasons as well. So the league was our best, um, our best competition in the end, which you wouldn't say that after the first four seasons, would you? So that's very nice. We also won the FA Cup once. Uh, we also got to two finals as well, which is unfortunate. We won the Carroll Cup twice. And we also won the Community Shield once as well. So we ended up finishing off with one, two, three. We did win 10 trophies in 10 seasons, so that does effectively uh, work out as one trophy a season, which is acceptable, you'd say. But there were definitely some seasons in there which were very underwhelming. But we ended off the rebuild strong here with five trophies in our last two seasons, which included two league titles, one Champions League, one FA Cup, and one Carabao Cup. So we ended off the rebuild very strong, but uh, the last, well, season... Season 7 and Season 8 were very underwhelming. They annoyed me the most, really, because we were a very good team at that point. But anyway, that is the end of the rebuild. 10 trophies in 10 seasons. Just about meets the requirements. And thankfully, we end off the rebuild here with a Champions League trophy. So that is the end of this video, guys. If you did watch it to the end, thank you very much. Please remember to hit that like button for me. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button as well. It really helped me out. Any much appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.